He is Jody Rainey. He is the principal at Homer Center High School, the president of the Heritage Conference as well. And I want to talk to him a little bit about both of those topics. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Jody, good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you with us here today. Let's start with the school, the high school, and uh, just talk about the beginning of the uh, of the uh, spring session. I, I don't like calling it the winter session because it's now the spring session. That's where we're headed here, the second half of the school year. And uh, and I, I guess uh, technically it's 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 off and running, isn't it? It is. We are. I like I like your terminology, Todd. We have a fall and a spring semester, so we just we just ignore winter. We don't care about winter stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's off well. Uh, we just made that switch here just a few days ago, and um, you know, and overall we're, we're pretty good. We're fairly healthy. Uh, you know, like anybody else, we do have a few kids that um, are you know, caught up in COVID protocol and stuff like that. But for the most part, we're fairly healthy. The kids are doing a great job and, uh, you know, education's happening, activities are happening. And so uh, overall, everything's pretty good at Homer Center. Do you sit down with with other administrators uh, and school leaders uh, for a sort of a half-year assessment to say, okay, here were the goals we had starting out and here's where we need to go over the course of the next few months? I think we do that. We try to do that monthly, actually. Um, you know, obviously the superintendents have their monthly, uh, SAC meetings for superintendents where, you know, they're just talking about different things that each school's experiencing, uh, getting information, things that come out of PDE. Uh, that really happens. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that's the role of an IU within, you know, we're members of Aaron IU 28, obviously. And so the state gives those things to the executive director, so Dr. Matson then passes that on to the superintendent, so everybody's aware of, of changes or requirements or reports that are due. And then we do the same as a secondary principals association. Uh, we have an Indiana County Secondary Principals Association, and we meet monthly uh, to discuss similar things, like things that impact us, our schools, uh, our students, and then just kind of roundtable different, maybe unique situations we're experiencing and try to brainstorm ideas to resolve them. I would guess that when you begin the school year sometime in the middle of August and you get all the way through to the end of uh, end of the year in, in June, uh, you never say to yourself, well, that went exactly as planned. <laughs> so so are, there, are there some things that have cropped up here in this first part of the year that you've had to make adjustments to or corrections on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think the biggest thing that we're cha- that's being uh, we're challenged on. I think I, I I don't want to speak for everybody, but I would think that we're all the same. Is just you know kind of staying up to, abreast with the different changes in uh, recommendations on how you handle COVID protocols and and health and safety plans. Um, those are ever changing as more information obviously becomes available, and then. Uh, the health experts, you know, pass that information down. So, you know, that's you're trying to keep everybody informed on what those are and what they look like has, has been a challenge. Um, and I think just getting back into some form of what we would call normal education, I guess, is, you know, doesn't seem like we have as many students bouncing in and out. Uh, not, um, you know, we don't have, you know, days where we're going weeks on end. Uh, with virtual learning and stuff. So I think just getting everybody back into a routine that we really haven't experienced for almost two years now. Educationally, have the kids caught up to uh, what they what they experienced and, and the lag in education that uh, was pretty much inevitable once the pandemic hit? Yeah, I, I can't speak for other schools. I can say for Homer Center, I think that our students are doing well responding to that. I think the, ch- the two challenges we have uh, taught would be one is – getting students accustomed to um, the, the difference between being in person and being virtual and how that process of learning occurs. Uh, I think we're starting to fall back into, you know, getting used to that routine and that, that group of way education occurs. And I think number two, I, I've said this to you before, is I just think it's, it's, the, it's the social gap. It's the, mm-hmm. it's the things that are caused by, you know, kids just not being able to have that interaction and the relationship gaps. So we're doing a lot at Home Center. I know today we have our first, we've started an advisory period um, where we're matched kids up with people that they have connected to in our building. 
and just kind of working on reestablishing those relationships and, and helping kids reestablish some goals and helping them through any issues that they may have. So we're really excited about this advisory initiative. And uh, like I said, today is our first day. It'll be this afternoon. And just really excited about the possibilities that it will create for our school and our kids. I would guess that there are new educational avenues that are open that weren't open before you had uh, the pandemic come along and influence the way that kids are taught in this day and age. I should tell folks that you're uh, talking to us today from Penn's Manor High School, where you've gathered with other folks from the Heritage Conference for a conference meet, which gives us uh, the perfect avenue to talk about the road to the KCAC presented by First Commonwealth Bank. We're on it, and uh, it, it's not so far until we, we see the end of it, Coach. Uh, well, it's there I called you, Coach. You, you, well, you that, fits. <laughs> that fits. That uh, fits. But, uh, Jody, as the conference president, uh, I, I'm sure you're pretty well thrilled with the way things have gone so far this year. Oh, yeah, it's it's exciting, you know, and, and obviously we're going to have some discussions about that today and working with Marianne and her team over at the KCAC, and uh, we're just excited to provide that opportunity, not only for our students, our communities. It's a big event in Indiana County. Uh, we're blessed that, you know, basketball junkies come out from no matter uh, where they're from and who they root for. Uh, this seems like it's an event that draws the entire community in, and and so we're looking forward to providing that opportunity again this year. And, you know, we got some tight races for some of the, uh, of obviously the section uh, playoff spots, you know. So there's, there's a lot of uh, exciting basketball left to be played before we play for the championship February 11th. Yeah, well, that's the thing, particularly the one girls conference, the one in which your school is. Uh, there are three really, really good teams, and only two of them can make it into the semifinals. So they're really going to be battling it out here over the next week and a half. They will be, and it's and it's exciting. That's what it's that's what it should be, and that's what it's about. Unfortunately, there's going to be a very good team that doesn't make it into to the Heritage uh, playoffs. But you know, the you know that's that's how we want it to be, and that's how it should be. So, I mean, it's unfortunate that not everybody can go, but the teams that do go obviously then have to earn it. And uh, so that's you know, if you're gonna if you've been involved in sports and you win a championship, you don't want to be a paper champion. You want to earn it on the floor, and and uh, that's what will happen on February 11. And I know that uh, Cambria Heights coming into the conference this year, Portage uh, is is limited in the conference, but they are participating in many events uh, in the Heritage Conference this year, and they'll be full in next year. That for them, it must be exciting to see how this is all unfolding, uh, because it's not just basketball championships that happen at the KCAC. That's right. We got, uh, we'll give our scholarships out. So a male and female, ath- or don't have to be an athlete, but a male or female from each of our member schools will receive a $250 scholarship and they'll be recognized in between the boys and girls championship games. And, um, so, you know, it's obviously, you know, you know, Todd, that I'm very big on our three pillars and that's, you know, academics, athletics, and the arts. So obviously we're going to be recognizing our, our top academics. Uh, students at the KCAC on February 11th, and then also we'll have our art exhibit again. Each school will have at least uh, three to four pieces of work on display, and uh, we have a lot of talented artists in the conference, and so we have uh, that, that going on as well. So we have all three of our key pillars on display February 11th. We have our scholarships we're given out for our academics. We have uh, two great championship games, I'm sure. And then we also are uh, having an art exhibit to showcase the talents of those kids in the arts as well. So it's uh, everything that we value at the Heritage Conference on full display. It only costs people $5 to get in uh, to see it. And uh, so we hope everybody, regardless of your school's playing in the game or not, come out and support that and support the kids. And it's, you know, I've, I've heard it said, you know, like kids that have played – in the basketball game, I've played for a state semifinal. I've played in district championships, but there's nothing like playing at the KCAC. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. You know, that's what we want our conference to be, and we're, we're very excited that we can give that to our kids. Art show, of course, in the upper concourse, and people can walk around and take a look at all of those things. Uh, for folks who are wondering um, – uh, and maybe even not as interested in basketball as, as they might think that they are, uh, when does the arena open on that day? Uh, we'll open it. I believe it's five o'clock. The first game tips off at six. Um, so you know, and there'll be obviously parking not only right there, 
but also across the, the former Bilo uh, for people that are interested. So plenty of parking, and I'd suggest get there early because I know that it fills up, and uh, it, but that's how we want it, and, and it provides a great atmosphere for kids. So 5 o'clock on February 11th, tickets are currently available at the KCAC, and like I said, they're only $5. Absolutely. All right. And then you're getting ready for District 6 and, and, and all of that as well. Uh, it's just amazing to me that uh, the Heritage Conference and, and the District 6 teams, of really all across Pennsylvania, uh, people have been really, really uh, working hard to make sure this basketball season comes through. Uh, Jody, we did a, a feature last week on PIAA officials. I don't know if you heard it or not. Talking with uh, some of the f- officials here from our chapter here in Indiana County, about the fact that um, there are um, officials running up and down these courts have been doing so for more than 40 years. Uh, there, there are guys in their, in their 60s, uh, and uh, I was talking to a fellow from the Armstrong chapter. He's 74 years old and still calling basketball games uh, just last week over at West Shemokin. Uh, that being the case, um, yeah. you know, one of the things that the report brought out was the fact that these guys are getting older. They can't run up and down those courts forever, and the basketball uh, and the football fields and the soccer fields and all of that. And, and two, it's all guys, and, and we need to get ladies interested as well. I, I know that that's a concern for school districts uh, that are scheduling games, but from a conference level, do you pay attention to those things too? We do, and uh, I know at Homer Center we actually we just couldn't make it happen this year uh, based on some issues that we had with uh, staffing it. But we actually were going to offer for credit a quarter credit class where students could actually uh, prepare and then take the exam uh, to be a PIAA registered official. Um, so that's something that, you know, I would encourage schools to think about is offering that as some form of an elective uh, and get more people in. And I think, too, we just need to do a better job of, you know, kids that are going on to college, especially if they stay local at IUP and stuff like that, to encourage them to get their license it's a good way to supplement uh you know a college kid always needs a few bucks in his in his pocket so it'd be a great way for them to earn a few dollars uh while going and pursuing their education and maybe can't you know maintain a full-time employment so i just think that there's all opportunities around and something that we need to continually try to emphasize and advertise that those that's needed and those opportunities exist and not only in basketball i mean volleyball definitely there's a great need for that and football and all sports. Yeah, I think Johnny Nepsha told me there were uh, eight officials for volleyball and and eight schools planned. So, yeah, that, that schedule tightens up pretty quickly. Uh, just a couple of moments left with Jody Rainey, who's getting set for a Heritage Conference uh, meeting today. Uh, anything you want to share about what's going to be discussed at that meeting? Uh, just general business today, and obviously we'll do our final preparations and make sure all, all of our I's are dotted and T's are crossed for February 11th. I know from, I'll circle back to Homer Center. I just want to emphasize we do have parent-teacher conferences February 7th. So that'd be for the elementary and the high school from uh, noon till 7 p.m. So any parents out there from Homer Center that uh, would like to have a conference with any of their child's teachers, we encourage them to call the main office of their respective buildings, and they can schedule those conferences there. Um, so that's, and like I said, and I've already talked about the advisory period that we have in the high school that's starting today on um, part of that too is to have the advisors like I, I know myself personally i have three students that uh, i'll be advising and i'll be contacting parents just to try to make that connection like sort like just complete the circle between the school the fu- the home and the kid um so you know so be looking high school parents at homer center could be looking for more info very good jody rainey thank you so much for spending some time give my best to everybody in the room there with you okay well, we will they're just starting to fill todd marino says hello everybody so there you go todd not we a single told. one of them said hi back i noticed that <laughs> They all had a weird look on their face like, who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Jody. Have a great day. All right. Thanks, Todd. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. And AM 1160. And AM 1160.